Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures. We're going to go up against a relatively significant army here. They only have 466 because I only happened to see them when they had about 750, but they have dwindled so significantly over that small period of time that it took me to just literally ride over to their positioning that they've already lost almost half of their units, which is just crazy. So that must mean that our forces right here are overwhelmingly powerful and there's not really much that i have to do i don't think it is literally going to be kind of a, a done deal here but i wanted to try and prevent as many casualties from our side as possible so that's the reason why i'm actually heading in here to begin with anyway because otherwise i would just let them do their own thing and i would just you know not take the risk to lose any of my own forces because let's face it i don't really have to you know don't really have to my vassals are doing a fantastic job in pretty much every aspect of our campaign against the Kuzate at the moment. And I have no complaints. I actually have no complaints about them, which is very strange. Usually I would be saying something about the AI and I'd say, oh, you know, they're, they're not as fast to react to defensive attacks and they're not, a, you know, they're not like... Uh, reacting to this incursion raiding the villages and so on you know that's the kind of thing i'm talking about however i don't have any of those complaints whatsoever i feel like the ai has been pretty much perfect in every single way uh i don't what 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 do you think what do you think what, what else could my vassals be doing that they're not already doing because they're taking things i don't know whether they're being defensive at all because let's face it, uh, defenses are actually kind of hard to do. And uh, I, I think that, was it on this series or was it on another series? I'm not entirely sure where I saw this comment. But someone said that you'd like to see more siege defenses uh, from me in my series. And I, that's the thing. It's funny. I agree. I love, I, I love siege defenses. I actually would love to participate in more of them. However, the main problem is... I just can't get into them. There's just nothing I can do because as soon as I go in to a garrison, I would either, there's two different things that I can do. I can either go into the garrison before an attacking army arrives, in which case it's highly unlikely that they will even go through with the siege. I mean, you've seen, if you've watched the entirety of this series so far, you've seen my attempts to actually get into siege defenses um, and, and it has always really resulted in people running away. So the enemy army is going to run away and uh, they're really, you know, they're kind of going to be in two minds about it, you know. They're going to be like, oh yes, let's, uh, let's besiege this. We have 1,200 units and uh, the garrison at this point would probably have about 1800 maybe 2000 because i'm in there at the same time with my army size on top of what is already in the garrison and the militia and so on so it's a pretty significant uphill battle for them however then uh, after starting the construction a little bit and maybe if they go this far maybe constructing a couple of siege towers maybe a battering ram maybe a couple of catapults here and there after that then they just abandon the whole thing. They just abandon the whole thing and they just think to themselves, okay, yeah, this is probably not going to work. So they just leave and they run away. So that's option one. That's usually what happens in the um, in most scenarios if I try to get into a siege defense. The other way that I can get into a siege defense is I either arrive late or I purposefully delay my reaction time to a possible siege attack from the enemy. So, for example, let's say that someone tries to take... Uh, what's, a, what's a thief close by to us right now? Uh, uh, Danustica, right? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's say that someone tries to take Danustica and I let them go into the attack itself. So I just let them complete all of their preparations I uh, let them build their siege rams and so on and so on and so on. You know, I just basically let them go into the actual siege itself. And then that's when I go in to the garrison and I try to get in through there. Now, however, there is a negative point on that. 
The negative point is that I'm going to be losing a pretty significant amount of my forces in that action because that's that's how it is in Bannerlord. You know, in, in Warband, it was completely different because if someone was already in a siege and they had already begun the siege itself, then you as the player would be able to pass through enemy lines without taking any penalty whatsoever. So it would be, well... Uh, somewhat easier to uh, to do that and it would be easier to get into siege defenses that's the reason why it's uh, such a, a common occurrence in warband where you're actually able to get into those uh, siege defenses and that's the reason why it's so difficult to get into banner lord ones because when you have uh, i don't know let's say you have 300 units or something like that and you try to sneak in through the enemy's lines they're going to take about a hundred of those units, I think. It really depends on your tactic skill, I think. I think it. I think it depends on that. Um, but don't quote me on that, because I, I actually have only done it a handful of times. And the first time that I did it was with Barney in the first series ever. And then uh, from then on, I always thought to myself, you know, uh, I'm I'm probably not going to do that ever again because I feel like the penalty is just too high to really give any benefit. Because even if you do try to sneak in, uh, it could very well be the case that the enemy will then pull back, dependent on the timing of your intervention. So, for example, if you were to go in a little bit too early, then the AI has an opportunity to react to your intrusion, and they can then pull away from the siege and they will lose nothing, whereas you've just lost 80, 90, 100 units from going in at that particular moment. So there are a wide variety of different, basically minefields that you're going to have to pass through to have a, uh, a chance at doing a siege defense. It's much more difficult to get into a siege defense. So hopefully that has explained uh, enough about my thought process regarding the siege defenses because don't, don't get me wrong, I would love to do some siege defenses. I think they're super fun. And we've only done a, a handful of them in all of the series that I've done on Bannerlord so far. I believe that we've done one with the Unmodded series. I think we did one with the Unmodded series once. And I think we also did one with Barney maybe twice. It's unlikely, personally, it's unlikely. Like, for example, look at this. Okay, so we have a situation here which is actually kind of cool because this gives me an opportunity to kind of demonstrate the action that I could possibly take to get into a siege defense. So you currently have an army going on here, yeah? So the castle literally has 60 defenders. So this is going to be very problematic because if it had a full garrison here, it would be a lot easier for me to react. But if they head inside, these guys are going to kill them very, very fast. So I'm going to try and get just a little bit closer. I don't want to really interfere with their with their ability to attack or anything like that. Are they actually are they actually going in now? Yes, they are. I think they have gone in. Yes, they have gone in. So let's see if we can interfere a little bit here. All right, so before we do anything about the siege defense, I'm just going to take a look at my army here and just try to make sure that I have as many uh, good units leveled up as I possibly can because you never know if we do actually get into a siege defense, which would be really cool at this point because I kind of miss doing it, and especially because Byron is an utter sharpshooter with his archery skill. It's going to be super fun to participate in that. So let's see if we can make it work. Huh? Let's see if we can make it work. So let's get some more of these crusade guys. Got a whole bunch. Got a whole bunch of those, that's for sure. There we go. Nice. Wow, so many. It really goes to show that taking prisoners and just kind of leaving them there, especially if they're tier 4 and below, are really valuable. It's really valuable to do that. You're going to gain so much valuable, uh, well, shall, shall we say, so much value from that, because I, I literally gained, uh, what, 10 or so units? 10, 15 units? Tier 3, tier 4 units? Pretty good. Pretty good. Anyway, this is where we currently are. Break in to help the defenders. So, here you go. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. So, you devised a plan to distract the besiegers so you can rush the fortress gates, expecting the defenders to let you in. You and most of your men may get through, but as many as 44 troops may be lost. So, 
Because I have such a significant army and we are in a pretty powerful position right now, I don't really mind losing 44 troops. Uh, so let's see what actually happens. But this is the main thing. If you don't have a very large army or you don't have a way to replenish your forces easily, then it's going to be a very devastating loss. For example, let's say you've just gotten to 100 units and you've just gotten a whole bunch of tier 4, tier 5 units leveled up and you have painstakingly leveled those guys up through, you know, vassal fights, bandits and so on. And then all of a sudden you lose half of those to this. I feel like it's a kind of a uh, bit of a silly mechanic. I, I understand why it is here because of course the developers are trying to prevent players from getting into the siege defense and being able to affect things. But there you go. We lost, yeah, actually a pretty significant amount of stuff. But we can now head in and we can now help and we can now fight a siege defense. So there you go. So yeah, your, your comment was not in vain. Apparently we did actually get an opportunity to do a siege defense. However, as I said, we did end up losing some units. In comparison, I had two options here. I could either go into the siege defense like we have already done, or I could have attacked them on the fields of battle. And generally, attacking on the field of battle is so much more effective and efficient, even though we do have the walls to protect us. Because just think about what kind of units I have in my army at the moment. I have horse archers primarily. And horse archers, as we know, are insanely good in field battles. So, you know, having, having those guys available is very, very useful indeed. All right, so let's do some damage. Let's do some damage. But uh, it was actually kind of interesting to uh, have a bit of a discussion with myself about this whole siege defense thing. But let me know your thoughts on it and, and whether you think this mechanic is balanced or whether you think it's silly or whether you think it uh, could be replaced by something else. Who knows? Who knows? Because this is still early access, so you never know whether the, the developers are going to listen to feedback or not. Because they might think that their vision is 100% uh, you know, perfect or whatever the case may be. But... Um, Personally, I don't know whether I agree about it at the moment. As you've no doubt seen, though, it's only 44 units. you got to think about that. For a large army like mine, 44 units is actually not that much. It really isn't that much, which is something to bear in mind. But I'm just talking about people that may not have as large an army as I do. And as a result, it could very well cripple the rest of their campaign, or at, at least in that in that particular time it might make things uncomfortable for them and uh, I don't really like the game ruining someone's experience just because of some random RNG you know what I mean I feel like uh, it's kind of sad to have the random RNG actually make that much of a difference anyway let's see if I can uh, find I'm looking for some replenishment here we go this is what I love. I absolutely love this, by the way. I love these arrow barrels that um, that they've placed here. I personally feel like that is amazingly cool. I love that. I love that. It makes so much sense for the defenders to have a way to replenish their ammunition because in Warband, there was nothing like that unless you were using a mod where you would be able to construct a blacksmith and then they would um, periodically provide you with ammunition over the course of the siege. And I think that that definitely fixed things, but in the native game, there was nothing like that. And there were, there were no, no replenishments to be had for the defenders. Although I believe that the AI defenders, uh, I don't think they ever run out of arrows, at least as far as I can remember, because it's been a while since I've played the native game and indeed done a siege, a siege defense, shall we say, <laughs> but yeah. That, uh, that it's kind of interesting, kind of interesting. Anyway, let's see if we can continue to do some damage here. I'm actually leveling up my athletics a little bit by shooting on foot, which is pretty cool. And let's just see if I can continue to deal damage here. I mean, this is the point. We're still ending up losing quite a few units. And I, by the way, I'm auto-delegating most of my orders here. So it's not me sending my guys out to fight there. It is literally just the AI deciding that that would be the best course of action, which is a bit weird. Personally, I feel like they should just stay inside and just utilize the bottleneck as best as they possibly can. But I don't really want to command them because it's going to mess up 
all the defensive points on the map. Because uh, I've done that before in Warband. And I'm kind of afraid to do it here. Because it's basically just going to pull everyone to the same point on the map. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to result in quite a few holes in our defenses. Okay, so I have no... Here we go. I have no ammunition. But I can literally just go up to here and... Come on now. There we go. A little bit of a weird thing with the hitbox of that Imperial Crossbowman there. He was kind of standing in my in my way. All right, let's see if we can do some damage. It's hilarious how they just turn into Sonic the Hedgehog as soon as uh, they're, they're going to retreat. You see that? Look at how fast they run. That is insane. There's no way if they were running toward me that they would run that fast. I assume that they are uh, coded that way, you know. They, they're just given that uh, that speed boost for retreating sake, I suppose. But there you go. That is indeed a victory for us. We did end up losing 39 units. But you've got to also consider the units that we lost from the initial entry. So we lost a grand total of about 85. Which is quite a lot. And I feel like if I had gone onto the field of battle, I probably would not have lost that many. If you think about it. Probably would not have lost that many. But it's fun to do a siege defense, and hopefully that has uh, sated your your bloodlust for a siege defense for a little bit, because I don't think I'm going to be doing too many more of these unless I can get in there ahead of time and try to bait them into attacking. Unless it is an overwhelming army and there's a significant, a significant amount more people in the garrison, because as it stands right now, I had to sustain most of the casualties in comparison to the garrison units themselves. Because personally, I would much prefer, you know, the garrison units, for example, the militia that are automatically recruited over time to be the ones to suffer the most casualties because then they will be able to regenerate themselves pretty quickly and easily. Whereas me, not so much. I do have to go around and recruit some things. And uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult. Otherwise, let's see what we can do. I'm going to be just taking tier four and below cavalry units. That's pretty much my mo at this point and we'll see if i can maybe mm, oh nice noble unit very good very good okay like it oh that's it that, oh no there we go there we go yes give me some of those kuzade horse archers i love those they're super super good uh hilariously enough though i actually found in the batanian series that i'm currently doing where we are using batanian themed armor and weapons as well as of course doing a bit of smithing as well um, I, I have actually found that the Batanian horse archers are actually better with bows than the Kuzate. Can you believe that? Yeah, I couldn't believe it myself, to be honest. But maybe their gear is a bit different or something. Maybe their weapons and, and things like that are a little bit different. Because if you take a look here, let's say, uh, have a look at Batania real quick, just so that I can show you what's going on. So, skirmishers. They might ha have different, um, yeah, they have different weapons. They have different weapons. Okay, that's super weird. Do they not come with bows? Because they're using thrown weapons by the looks of things here. I'm not entirely sure. I can't tell from this screen because you can see here that he seems to have javelins on his back. So it might very well be the case that this guy is using javelins but has bow skill. And I'm not entirely sure why he'd, ha why he'd have bow skill if he doesn't have a bow. So they must come with bows sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I just thought that was quite interesting because if you take a look at the uh, heavy horse archer right here, they obviously have bows. You could see that they come with arrows equipped and they have 130 in bows. So it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit weird to, to think that uh, the Batanian skirmishers have a higher bow skill, but they don't have any bows equipped. But obviously, I, I'm not entirely sure about that because I haven't seen those mounted skirmishes in action yet. But it's going to be interesting to find out. Anyway, let's see what else we can do now because we could go to Urzana Castle if we want to or we could start to take some things here. Might be a good idea to take Lavinia Castle. I don't believe they have a large amount of units inside the garrison there. They might, but I think it should be easy enough for us to take. Now, bear in mind that uh, there's another comment that I actually wanted to talk about as well. Um, I think it's I think it's to do with auto resolves. I think it's to do with auto resolves. Yes, uh, I think someone was uh, mentioning that they would like to see less auto resolves, and absolutely no problem at all. I really don't mind doing uh, more battles. However, the main reason why I do auto resolves is literally just because it's a castle. 
if it's a castle and I'm going to suffer the same casualties either way, I don't really, I don't really mind whether I do like a manual or not, but it just, it's just easier, you know, because a town is like this epic big siege where we're going to be entering from all kinds of different angles and things. And uh, for example, this, do you want me to fight this guy manually? I mean, I, I, why? There's no, there's no point. There's no point. He, he's just going to die super, super quickly. And look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Those kinds of things. It's just easier and quicker for both of us to do that because otherwise, you know, it just doesn't seem to be worth it in my opinion, at least maybe it, maybe it is worth it to you. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but you know, going with like what 600 units or something like that up against a guy that only has 95 is just kind of a steamroll. And, uh, yeah, doesn't really make much sense. But otherwise, um, I think what I'm going to do with auto resolves, as I've said before, is pretty much if there's a large battle, that's usually when I'll go in. I will, I will do the large battles manually because otherwise it's way too damaging in my opinion. And, uh, the sieges, well, it really depends. The main reason why I like to do auto resolve at castles is because I don't really like to waste food supplies. Because I have 29 food right now, 29 days of food, should we say. And let's say that I wanted to destroy the walls of Lavinia Castle. <laughs> We've got some more theory crafting coming up. Ah, oh, yes, great, isn't it? Okay, so let's say, uh, oh, they've only got 30,000 on the walls. Okay, I think I could probably do that pretty easily then. So we're going to do it just, just so that we can actually see what's going on here. So it's winter 14 right now, right? So let's just take a, a, a little bit of a, a note of that, just, just for our testing purposes. And we'll see how fast we're able to get the walls down and how many days worth of food is wasted without doing an auto resolve. And I, I know that someone also mentioned, what, does it increase your efficiency to build siege towers and battering rams before you do the auto resolve. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it makes no difference whatsoever. Um, but maybe it does. Maybe there is a uh, maybe there is like a, a passive benefit or some kind of percentage bonus to the efficiency of the units that go in. Um, but I would personally say no. I would personally say that it probably doesn't. Uh, but. Who knows? Maybe it does. Maybe it does. We, sh we should probably do some testing on that as well, shouldn't we? Yes. We should probably do some testing on that too. Just to make sure that we are doing the most efficient thing possible. So that we're not wasting units unnecessarily, you know? Because I hate that. So, you know, wasting units, that's not my thing. That's the reason why I generally tend to like doing the auto resolve to begin with. Because that actually makes it possible for us to, you know, take things just that much quicker without losing too many units either. All right. So, it's been three days so far, and we have 26 days worth of food. So, let's have a look. See if we can destroy the walls relatively quickly here. Now, bear in mind that most castles will have a higher wall level. Because at the moment, it only had 30,000, which, which is the exact reason why this is not going to take that long. But, you got to think about the case where most castles will have walls level 2. And that usually has, uh, as far as I'm aware, 67,000 HP, which would take us double the time. So let's just approximate that. So once this wall is down, I will pause the game and we'll take a look at how long it has taken. Okay, almost. One more barrage, I think. Yep, there we go. Okay, so the barrage is now done. So we were at winter 14, right? So now we're at winter 19. That took us five days or just about four days, four and a half days or something like that. And we've gotten the walls down. So let's say that we double that and we make it nine or 10 days. So it would probably be nine or 10 days, maybe even more than that, because technically 30 uh, to 67 is just, a, well, it's obviously much more than half. Um, well, shall we say much more than double the amount of HP that you're going to have to go through with the walls. So let's say that it is, let's say about 12 days, maybe two weeks, right? So let's say two weeks, uh, I'm going to give it to Ospir, actually, because he's using a huge amount of influence to try and persuade us right now. Anyway, let's say it takes us about 12 to 14 days to take a regular level 2 walled castle. 
And that's uh, that's a pretty significant amount of food. Because at the moment, it has only taken us, what is it, five days, which is really not that bad. That's not that bad. So I think generally it should probably be based, whether we go in or not in a manual siege, it probably should be based on the wall level. Because, of course, if the castle has level two or even level three walls, it's just going to take way too long to get those down and as a result it's going to make our food supplies dwindle so significantly that I'm going to spend the next I don't know how long uh, trying to get as much food as I possibly can in preparation for the next siege and I'm just going to spend more time going shopping in the marketplaces than actually fighting so uh, hopefully I've explained that relatively decently and uh, we're going to be going in. We're going to be going into this castle. It's been a while since we've actually done a castle siege. So, so this should be pretty fun. Uh, if I can just get off my mount. There we go. Now I'm just going to go for two-handed. Oh yeah, there we go. Take him down. Can we? Can we take him down? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, personally, I really love the sieges in Battle Lord. I uh, would just prefer if I could um, maybe get inside a little bit easier. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, shield, shield time. Heal time. Thank you very much. Let's, let's push him back. Push him back. Get in there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. Byron's inside. Let's do some damage. Nice. 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 Good, good. Okay, now don't get shot, sir. Don't get shot. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Okay, this is bad. This is bad news, bears. Shield up. Oh, shield. Ah. That was unfortunate. What? What? Where? Where are my guys going? Where are they going? They're, they're just they're just chasing all these guys over here instead of going to the battlements. Come on now. The logical logical thing to do would be to go to the battlements first and then work inward. No? Or at least that's what I thought to do. Oh well. Never mind. This is actually a really cool layout for the castle. Look at this. I actually really like getting a bird's eye view here. When you're down on the ground, you can't really appreciate the scope of what is going on you know there are so many different avenues of attack here as well i mean literally we can come in from here as you can see uh, for some reason you're not able to go through tunnels and things like that with the free camera i don't know why that is but yeah anyway so you can come in from the destroyed walls on either side and then there are all kinds of different elevations look at these stairs right here so you can go up the stairs onto these battlements then there's more stairs going in through to this little archery nest tower place and then you have all these other places where you're going to be walking on top and it's just it's a it's a great design it really is a great design i i, I gotta give uh, the developers props for this because generally the siege layouts are very immersive and very enjoyable to actually watch because you can exactly see thanks to the amount of corpses on the ground where big battles have taken place and where people have been killed look at this we have a bunch here over there and we have a bunch here and leading over to there so that really makes a huge difference to the amount of immersion that you're going to see in the game as well. And there you go. We actually only ended up losing 10 units. As I've said before, it is much, much easier to go in manually if you've taken down the walls. But as I say, it's a bit dependent on how much HP the walls have, at least in my opinion. Maybe you don't share that opinion, but and that's absolutely fine. You, you don't have to share my opinion. It's just in general... I'd prefer not to go shopping the whole time for a huge amount of food. That's the only reason, really, why I don't generally tend to go into manual battles all the time. But otherwise, there you go. We're going to give this to Mr. Heckard, I suppose. Mr. Heckard. Yes, he's going to do a good job, hopefully. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, there's uh, Vostrum with 1,410 units and Marinia Castle with 725. And we're doing pretty nicely, I feel. And look at this. We actually are in a siege against Sibir as well. Look at that. 1,126 units currently besieging that. Going to be fun to see what happens there. Seems like every single other fief that we own is doing pretty well and doesn't seem to be 
uh, hugely under attack or anything like that. So should be pretty fine for me to continue on the offensive. And I'm going to be interested to see how we do. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.